Shumai Paub. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to our series of podcasts where we'll be chatting with a range of stakeholders that we work with in both the primary and secondary sector. Now, the purpose of these podcasts is to give you further insight into the work we do across Wales. Croeso uh, in cyfres o podlediadau lle byddwn yn sgwrsio efo nifer o randdeiliad rydym yn gweithio gyda yn y sector cynradd ac uwchradd. Now, pwrpas y podlediadau, podlediadau yma yw i roi cipolwg pellach i chi i'r gwaith o dynnu yn neud ar draws Gymru. Yn y podlediad heddiw, byddwn yn edrych ar yr ochr technegol a'r chyfarpar pan rydyn nhw'n gweithio gyda ysgolion uwchradd sydd yn sy'n darparu cyrsiau dysgu hybrid. Now, in today's podcast, we'll be focusing on the secondary sector and looking at the IT side and the equipment used when facilitating hybrid learning courses. So, without any hesitation, I'd like to introduce Matt Edwards from Llanfachin School in Powys to today's podcast. How are you doing, Matt? Hi, Stephen. I'm good, thanks. Thanks for having me today. Good. How is everything up in Powys, up in North Powys uh, this morning? Very good. It's, uh, it's nice, sunny, sunny outside today, so everything's all hunky-dory. Great, thank you. So I'll fire straight into the into the first question, uh, just to get us started. So a quick introduction. Uh, so who are you and what's your role within your school? Okay, yeah. So um, my name's Matt Edwards. I'm the IT manager here at Ascol Llanfair Flynn, um, previously known as Llanfair Flynn High School, where I started here back in 2002. Uh, we oversaw a transition to a through school in September 2020 and um, I made my way over then to the the new all school um, through the new name of Oscar Llanfothlin where I still um, uh, employed as the IT network manager here. Good um, so yeah just give us an insight how long has your school so Llanfachin school been involved in delivering collaborative hybrid learning courses? Okay, so we first started on this journey with ESCOL back in 2019 um, and the idea was put onto the table to us uh, where, you know, the offer was put that um, students could access these courses. Um, so the journey has, has started from there really, 2019 and uh, it's been going from strength to strength. Great, fantastic. And how has that evolved? So 2019 that you were... A Powys and Llanfachin were very early adopters of this collaborating and delivering hybrid learning courses. How has that evolved over time to, to today in 2024? Okay, so uh, back in 2019, the, the whole project, the whole concept was, uh, was all new to ourselves. Um, so there was a lot of uh, sitting around a table, planning things out of how uh, we could best achieve this. Obviously, um, I think Kerry Diggin had already um, started off with uh, a pilot of the project uh, and it expanded then into the schools in Powys. Uh, so we sat around the table, planned out how this could, could work out and um, we, we trialled different scenarios, different setups, um, tested out what worked best for, for us and with the schools that we were collaborating with and moving forward to today's um, incarnation of the system, as it were, um, Microsoft, uh, the, the, the project we're using is uh, through Microsoft Teams, and a number of features have been fast-forwarded um, from the initial concept to, to what we see today. Um, okay. So the system is completely different now to how it was when we initially started on the project, and all for the better. In that initial setup as the network manager, where obviously you are at the cold face making sure that the devices work and the systems work, uh, were, 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 did, did, us, did we as a skull, did we uh, involve you in the conversations to making sure everything was working fine? How, how did that transpire? Uh, absolutely, yes. Yeah. So uh, as I said, when, when we first um, went on board with the system, uh, it was very much a learning curve for, for both parties involved. Um, but along the way, we worked closely with, with the ESCOL team and um, where things weren't quite working properly, we'd go back, we'd feed uh, feedback using my knowledge as an IT manager and uh, hardware side of things, speaking to um, colleagues in other schools as well. We, we knitted together and um, uh, you know, found, found solutions to little problems that might, may have needed tweaking, um, initially around sound, uh, microphones, the clarity, picking up voices. 
but we had a lot of feedback and influence in in today's product that is now on the market uh, for the Esco brands. Fantastic, and I, I think personally, it, my uh, experience in working with secondary schools across way, I think it's vitally important that we have uh, strong working relationships with the IT network managers with, within the schools, making sure because uh, unfortunately when issues do arise, obviously you are the um, the person that maybe gets it in the neck most of the time from the Absolutely. teachers and, <laughs> and the teachers. So it's important that personally for me that I do work closely with you. Is, is that similar with you, making making sure that there's strong relationships with or some kind of relationship with us uh, with, with, with yourselves uh, absolutely i mean um the, the the working relationship goes with the ESL team but also with my colleagues here in school and the students that are accessing those courses um so they know that if they have an issue they can come to me and i know that if i've got an issue that needs resolving higher up then i can go straight to the ESL team and, and they're always there to support us along the way yeah i think having that strong working relationship between us at school and the network and the IT managers is, is vitally important. And we are seeing that in, in many, many schools, mo most schools across Wales. So and I think yeah, it's so important to, sorry to jump in then, but uh, no, I think no, it's no, so no, important no. to go back on that open dialogue side of things that with my staff and with um, our students, I ensure that they let me know if they have got any issues because it's those schools then that have been um, uh, proactive on, on a setup gets the best out of the project. Yeah. Um, so often you hear of um, things perhaps not working quite as they should, but they go unmentioned. Yeah. And then the students suffer because they haven't got the, the correct setup. And many a cases, it's a quite a simple, easy fix. So I'm quite open with our staff and the students to say, look, if there's a problem, please let me know. Because if I don't know about it, we can't help and fix it. Yeah, uh, and, and getting that working relationship both ways means that the uh, the setup that we have is uh, is very successful. Yeah, you just touched uh, on on the on the next question just just uh, just now, but uh, yeah, in in your involvement as the network manager or IT manager, you've got ma every school has a different title for 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 for, for your role within the school. But when jack it comes, of all trades. <laughs> jack of all trades, definitely, and uh, yeah. So in your with your involvement within your schools as as the network manager, um, how how do you go about supporting the students in the first? So I'm going to break break this down into, into three elements, the students, the teachers and the hardware itself. So what, what's your involvement in supporting the students in, in the first instance? Because obviously they're the ones that are accessing these hybrid learning courses. Absolutely. So uh, in the initial stages, um, prior to the students um, starting in September, I'll have already have prepped up laptops for those students accessing the EOSCO EOS courses. Uh, we're quite fortunate in Powys that um, laptops are, are um, allocated to our post-16 students through the, um, the hub scheme. Um, so we can use the EdTech funding to, to purchase those laptops and um, that can all be done through, through Powys County Council. So prior to the students starting, uh, I start the journey off by prepping these laptops for them. I'll have been given a list of allocations of uh, who of our students are studying the ESCO courses. Then come September, uh, when they, they join us again for their A-level courses, uh, I'll have a little workshop with those students um, that are going down the EOSCOL journey because this is quite new to them as well. Uh, traditionally, they'll be used to working in a classroom with a teacher in front of them. So this is a whole new um, journey for them for their A-level courses. So I sit down with them. I go through uh, what's required, how they can access their courses online through the Hub platform. Um, ensure that they've got the, the, the resources, the logins, uh, the setups, access to the courses that they require. Um, and then they've got access to myself if they need any further um, yes, yeah. uh, support on that. So they've always got access to me. Yeah, fantastic. And, and that, that moves swiftly on then to the teachers then. So you mentioned that the uh, uh, obviously, you touch base with, with the students and you notice that their digital competences as increased or improved o over time um how 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 do you support uh, the teachers then when it comes to delivering their their hybrid learning courses because obviously as uh, we we do support teachers we provide maybe drop in sessions we we meet with teachers in the, in the summer term but similar to to the, to the students there's a long maybe period where they maybe not logging into 
Microsoft Teams or Hub and maybe in a way or forget about certain protocols. How do you support teachers then uh, in delivering their hybrid learning courses? Yeah, so similar to the the students, obviously the the staff have got um, similar needs, but also quite different needs. Yeah. Um, So going down the teaching elements, again, we'll have refresher courses. Some of these might be brand new to, to delivering a course online. Um, and uh, they, they need a little bit of a helping hand of um, knowing what uh, what software packages do various different things. Depending on the, the subject itself and the technology that they're using, uh, they might need some support in actually connecting the equipment up. Um, yeah. So again, it's, it's just having either one-to-one sessions or a small group of team um, that are delivering an ESCO course, whether it be from the same subject or from across a different subject range. Um, we will have little workshops that... Um, they can go down to the, the teaching rooms. Um, we can explain what the, uh, the, the various equipment is. Yeah. Um, some of it might sound very, very basic, and um, we don't want to alienate anybody. But you'll be surprised how many people actually um, uh, prefer that kind of style of stripping it right back to the bare minimum, to the very, very basics, and going through each device. Like, this is the webcam. This connects to here. If you've got a problem, this is where you can uh, yeah. you find those settings. So I know everybody works on a different kind of level of uh, digital competency, but um, I say stripping it right back, yeah. then we have then that network of staff that are delivering the courses that are able to support myself in supporting other st- teachers and members of staff that will be using um, the ESCOL equipment to deliver lessons. So that That's bank really builds up. So my knowledge, is, my knowledge passes on to somebody else. I'm there all the time to support them, but they can also fall back on other members of staff then that have been trained up and they all support and help each other out. Yeah, that's great. And and alongside, obviously, we we as... Uh, the support package that we provide to schools is we do offer professional learning opportunities for for teachers, maybe focusing more on the the teaching and learning, the pedagogy side. But I think there's there's always a place for that, those fine details with regarding uh, yeah, the finer finer arts of maybe how to use certain devices, how to Definitely. use, how to log in. So uh, I think Hardware having that side. Support, yeah, the hardware side. Yeah, I hardware think having side that support. Hardware side specifics, uh, you know, kind of in-house, hands-on, have a feel for it, have a play around. Fantastic. So, yeah, I think, um, yeah, from the sound of it, you, you are, as, as a network manager or IT manager within the school, I think you are there at the cold face when it when things do go wrong or whether there are issues or but also in being proactive as well making sure that things are set up ready to go and maybe just touch basing with the students and teachers at the start of the year but but like i just mentioned now that sometimes things do go wrong um we can't help hide away from that that could be the internet dropping for a, a, a few few moments uh, in the day it could be hardware issues, but in your experience, then what kind of issues do you see uh, arise as as a network manager, um, and how do you go about resolving these issues? Yeah, so yeah, I mean it's clear problems do happen, and um, we don't deny the fact that problems happen. Uh, the problems are quite minimal, thankfully, and um, you know when they they do arise through some of the training that I've gone through, the students, all the staff are able to step in. So for example, some of the issues that we may come across, uh, the microphone isn't working. So the pupils will be online in the class and the teacher can't hear them on the other side. There could be two sides to that. It could be an issue on our side or it could be an issue on the remote side. So yeah. what we've done is we've, we've trained the students and the staff to kind of pinpoint or look out for the clues to, to work out where the problem lies. Yeah. Um, so we've gone through so, certain scenarios and deliberately broke things so that pupils know what to look for uh, when they're in those situations. Um, so I say the common things are microphones on mute or a cable has come unplugged. Yeah. Um, possibly the webcam isn't coming on. There's no lights on the webcam. Again, most of it is down to either a cable being um, unplugged at the back of the, the device or... Um, Within Microsoft Teams itself, they may have uh, changed the speaker. Um, yeah, yeah, we use absolutely. different scenarios, so we'll have speakers built into our um, clever touch screens in the classroom that they use to access the the remote sessions. The speakers in there. There's also um, a wireless uh, Jabra style yeah. speaker 
which the pupils can place in front of them, which acts as the microphone as well for clarity. So occasionally the, uh, the settings may have been switched over and one might be on mute, one might be not, not active. So we've gone through in those uh, little workshop sessions when we've uh, started off the year, going through all different common scenarios yeah, that's good. Um, so that the, 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 the lessons run more smoothly. So if one of those hap uh, issues happen, it's not a case of oh, all panic. We need to try and find Matt. We need to try and get some IT support down here. Yeah, um, definitely. Those little niggles or those little issues, the pupils or the staff themselves can, uh, can work those out and put them through. Yeah, great. Beyond that, that generally is a, a bigger issue, which I wouldn't expect them to, uh, to, to get hold of or, or to work out. Um, so in those scenarios where they can't fix an issue, um, that they know that they can contact myself um, on my email or on, on my telephone yeah. and I can go down and sort it out. But the key thing is that they don't panic. When yeah, an issue definitely. does arise, there's a workaround, there's ways around it. If the screen goes off, for example, they can still access the, the, the teacher through Microsoft Teams and send them instant messages um, so they can still continue with the work. So the key yeah. thing is don't panic. If there's a problem, it will be fixed as soon as possible. But I, I think it, it um, is very minimal these days. Yeah, I think you've hit the nail on the head there regarding troubleshooting. So it's 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 about not panicking, finding the way around it. And I also, I think uh, from from my experience in visiting Canvachin School, is that your your office is nowhere near where the students access the um oh, it's all um the, the the post sixteen hybrid learning courses. So therefore, they need to be able to troubleshoot. And I, I know that the the head um they've got a six four mentor head a sixth form within in close proximity but that's not always the case so they need to be able to find to, to troubleshoot those those, uh, those issues but i think having that self yeah that team around the the learners the team around the teachers and being able to support each other i think that's vitally important and one thing i think which uh, moving forward would be useful for anybody listening to this podcast today um, yeah. in the same similar role or um, as a teacher or somebody that's worried about um, any uh, any issues that may arise is possibly ask your IT technician in your schools to um, to create like a bullet point on a laminate. Um, yeah. Put them in the ES school teaching rooms. So certain common issues that could arise, there's a bullet point. If your device does this, try this. If it does that, try that. So it could be like a five-step, four-step bullet point plan yeah. Uh, which just takes out some of the burden on some of the uh, common issues that could arise that can be easily fixed and the yeah. lesson can just flow flow naturally. Fantastic. OK, so just final question there. Th th thanks for that, that Mama. F final question from me, because um, I've taken enough of your time this, this morning. So thinking about the whole year, um, obviously you have busy periods where you have to maybe work with the teachers and the students um, more than other, peri other periods within the year. Also, maybe looking at working with devices and the hardware, there's obviously you have busy periods. When, when looking at the whole year as a, as a, when you're supporting these hybrid learning courses, mm -hmm. when would you say is your, is your busy periods and, and what kind of of things you do do in those busy periods. So yeah, just roughly just share what your your plan is for for the mm -hmm. year when it comes to supporting these hybrid learning courses. And hopefully it'll transpire, trans, transpire that it's not all consuming because you're a busy man. You've got lots of other things that you need to support, not only these these post-16 hybrid learning courses. So yeah, just think about that 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 whole yeah. year and when what when's when's busy and what you do and so and so on. Okay, so um yeah thinking about that one, um it, it really narrows down to to two two big windows um those windows being i would say is probably the the end of the summer term yeah when we're planning and prepping for september yeah and then september when we get the new intake and the new cohort in getting them up and running and support them everything else in between it kind of flows itself you know the the students get on with their role uh they, they they've familiarized themselves with the setup we've done our training courses and then it's just a smooth natural cycle back around yeah. again so going back to the, the summer term, um, my main tasks in that time of year is uh, communicating with our timetabler. Um, yeah. so I think that's very, very key is the communication between senior management or whoever puts your timetables together to find out what students are likely to be taking these courses in September. Mm -hmm. 
and what rooms they're being timetabled in as well. So during the summer term or the summer holidays, if um, I know some um, some technicians are, are term time only, um, some uh, work through uh, the summer holidays as well, or they're in for a few weeks. But during that summer term then, or into the summer holidays, we can go in, or I can go and ensure that um, each of those rooms that have been timetabled, ready for those uh, September lessons, are all up to date. The equipment's all working. The cables are all in place. Batteries are charged up or batteries are replaced for any uh, wireless devices. Mm -hmm. um, I also then get from the timetable the, the list of option uh, subjects that students have taken or chosen to take. And so I can identify who our EUSCOL students are for the following year. Uh, then based on that, then during the summer term, um, I then collect and, and bring in all the, uh, the devices from the students that are leaving us that summer. Yeah. So that can be a fairly big job, depending on how many students you, you've got and ensuring that all those devices are brought back in to get them all prepped up, cleaned up, ready for the next cohort. And then, as I said, coming into September, then it, it just rolls into it naturally that uh, those devices have been collected, prepped yeah. and redistributed then to the, the new students. And we go through the process of doing our training, training with them. So it's okay. only really for that summer period, the start of September, which I would say is um, is the busiest time yeah, in, um, in, in onboarding the new students. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Throughout yeah. the year, you'll dibble in and out of it, but it's a sign of a good system when the uh, the product has been put in place. The pupils know exactly what they're they're, they're doing, and um, and they get on with it. When yeah. I know that I'm not hearing any um, any phone calls or any problems to go down to there, I know it's all working, and uh, yeah, that's that what you want. Really, pupils are happy. So. It's uh, for anybody listening to this and, and panicking about, oh, it's going to take up all my time. It really doesn't. And uh, right. with a support good, around yeah. you as well, then, uh, then th there's no real issues with it at all. Great. Uh, just uh, maybe uh, an additional question here from my end. I, I know uh, devices can be short in some schools, especially if you've got a big cohort coming in. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Obviously, some schools have bring your own device policies for, for six formers and, and I know some schools have got, uh, are adopting that um, and allowing students to use their devices for their school courses or the collaborative hybrid courses. Do, do, you, do you adopt that policy within Llanfachan? Uh, we're, we're, as I said earlier on, we're very fortunate in uh, Llanfachan in that um, we do have one-to-one -one devices for our uh, six form okay. students. Yeah. Um, so they, they all are allocated, whether they're doing an ESCOL course or not, um, they are all allocated a laptop on arrival, yeah. but we do um, offer a BYOD um, system as well um, through our wireless network. Um, so students are able to bring their own devices okay. in if they wish, uh, and they can connect up onto the Paris um, the Paris Wi-Fi system. Yeah. And once they're accessing through the Wi-Fi system, they can access services such as the hub. Uh, through that connection. Okay, so I think, like I mentioned earlier, thank you so much uh, for your time this morning. Um, yeah, valuable just maybe having a, a chat with you regarding your role as as the network manager within Llanbachan School, but a lot of the things that you mentioned there, they would trans transfer to IT managers across, or, or IT technicians acro across, across Wales, really, that are maybe... Um, <laughs> delivering hybrid learning courses so thank you ever so much for your time uh this morning and yeah we'll catch up soon thank you matt no problem at all thank you very much for having me i've enjoyed it good see you now bye